Okay, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to balance chemical equations, and I'm going to try and show you some simple steps that if you follow those simple steps, you will be successful in balancing chemical equations. This is our first chemical equation. We have methane gas, which we're going to burn in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. All right, now we have to have the chemical equation balanced because we have to have conservation of mass. We cannot create or destroy mass, which for chemical equations basically means we have to have the same number of each element on each side of the chemical equation. The mass on the left has to equal the mass on the right. We cannot create or destroy matter. Okay, so let's just see. Maybe it's balanced already. Let's just do a quick check. We have to have the same number of each element. So we have one carbon on the left and one carbon on the right. We can say the carbons are balanced. The hydrogens, we have four hydrogens. This subscript next to the four, a hydrogen tells us we have four hydrogens. But we have only have a two over here, so we only have two hydrogens. So we have four on the left and two on the right, and that means our hydrogens are not balanced. So therefore, we have to go through and balance the chemical equations. This is, these are the steps I think you should follow. It's not really just a guess and check. If you follow this systematic process, I think it works out a little better. Draw a line under the equation, draw a line down the center, and now we have a little table where we can tally up the elements on the left and the right hand side because we know we have to have the same number of each. So we can see that we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on the left. <clears throat> and I'm going to write down the same elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on the right. And then I'm going to write down how many? One, four, two, and then one, and then two, and then three, because I have oxygen here and here. All right, now I go to the top of my table, my carbons are balanced, that's good. I go to the next element, my hydrogens are not balanced, so that is not good. I have to balance my uh, hydrogens. Now the only way I can balance any of the elements is by adding whole numbers to the fronts of these chemical formulas. I cannot change this sub subscript this subscript, this one, or any of the subscripts. You cannot change subscripts. You cannot put numbers between the elements. You can only put whole numbers in front of the chemical formulas for the elements or the compounds. In this case, I need hydrogen. This is the only place I have hydrogen on the right-hand side. I need two more hydrogens, so I'm going to put a two here. There's already a one there, so I'm going to put a two. All right. Now, this number is called a sub, excuse me, it's called a coefficient. And if I put a coefficient, if I change the coefficient, I have to retally that side. And in this case, now I have four hydrogens and I have four oxygens. So now I go back up to my chemical equation here and into my table. My carbons are balanced, my hydrogens are balanced, but my oxygens are not. I need two more on the left hand side. And the way I can do that is I can put a coefficient of two. All I can do is put whole numbers in the front. That's my coefficient number two. Then I go back and I balance, retally, and I can see I have four. So I have one, four, and four, one, four, and four. My chemical equation is balanced. The same number of, e of each element on each side of the chemical equation. And that's my final chemical formula, which says one molecule of methane plus two molecules of oxygen will produce one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. All right, let's erase that. Let's go on and do another one. All right, in this case, we have on the left-hand side, we have, of course, potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. So I'm gonna write down the same elements, potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. I have one, one chlorine, and I have three oxygens. Over here, I have one chlorine, one potassium, and I have two oxygens. Now, you can see I have one and one, and one and one, but I have three and two for the oxygen. Now, if you have a three and a two, most likely the common number between those is six. Okay, the, com the least common multiple of those two is six. So I'm probably gonna wanna have six of each oxygens on each side. So that means in order to do that, I have to put a two here. 
Now, because that's two times three is six for the oxygen, but I'm going to retally the whole thing. It tells me now I have two potassiums, two chlorines, and I have six oxygens. Now, to get six oxygens on this side, I have to put a coefficient of three in front of that chemical formula. Now, that tells me now that I have six oxygens. But my potassium and my chlorine are not balanced. I need another one on each of, of each of those elements. So I put a two here, then I go through here, and you can see I have two, and then I have two, and you can see I have two, two, six, two, two, six, and that tells me my chemical equation is balanced. My mass is conserved, and that is the final chemical equation. All right, you see I went through the same process, made a table, tallied them up, Try to do systematic process instead of just kind of guess and check. All right, let's try another one. Here is the last one we're going to do. This one's a little trickier. You can see we have some zinc, and we also have some sulfur, and we also have some oxygen. Okay, on the left, on the right hand side, we're going to have the same elements. Oops, that's the zinc, that's sulfur and that is oxygen. On this side, we have one, one, and two, and on this side, we have one, one, and again, we have three. So we have a two and a three. That tells us we're probably gonna want six, of ox six oxygens on each side. Now on the left-hand side, that's pretty easy. I can just put three here, my coefficient of three, I didn't change the zinc or the sulfur, so I have six. Now on this side, to get six oxygens, it's a little trickier because I ha already have three, but they're in two different molecules. So I'm gonna put a two here, that'll give me two. Now I have four, and I could put a two here, then I'll have six. But I did change the zinc and the sulfur, so I gotta retally the whole thing. Two zincs, let's see, I have two sulfurs, and I have six oxygens. Four, two from the first chemical formula and four from the second one. So now I have two, two, and six. I have two zincs and two sulfurs, and luckily over here I have a compound that has just zinc and sulfur, and I can put a two right there, and that will give me two of each. And once again, I have two, two, six, two, two, six. My chemical formula is balanced, and that is my final chemical formula. All right, you can see I went back and forth, I tallied them all up, wrote down how many there were, and I, then I kind of went back and forth to try to get the chemical formula to be balanced. All right, I think if you do that, you'll be successful. It takes practice. If you do a few, you'll get the process down quite rapidly. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that was helpful, and have a good day.